Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about zirconium. Um, zirconium is a transition metal and it is right below titanium. So, like titanium, it is very, very hard, although not as light as titanium. Um, some of its uses are uh, mostly actually not as the metal, but as compounds of the metal, and mostly as zirconium dioxide, also known as zirconia. Um, probably the most well-known application of zirconia is in fake diamonds, but some more industrially important applications are in um, what are called refractory materials, which are very resistant to high temperatures. Um, while other uh, things such as aluminum oxides are re somewhat resistant to high temperatures, uh, zirconium oxide is resistant to extremely high temperatures. And unlike graphite, which is also extremely resistant to high temperatures, zirconium dioxide is already oxidized. So if, um, if you have graphite at very high temperature in the presence of some oxidizing agent such as oxygen or, or uh, chlorine or fluorine or whatever, um, it can uh, react whereas the zirconium dioxide won't, or is much less likely to, because it's already so oxidized. Um, the metal itself is not used for very many applications. Um, it, uh, well, I just read on Wikipedia to brush up a little bit, and uh, Wikipedia says that it's actually used um, as a getter in vacuum tubes to react with any kind of ex extra um, gas floating around, although I'm, I'm frankly not sure why they use zirconium and not uh, sodium for those purposes. Um, anyway, so uh, I, was, I, I got on eBay uh, a, a large bar of zirconium. It's um, one troy ounce, and you'll see uh, that the side of the bar is, is kind of messed up, and that's because I was um, playing around with anodization of niobium for my niobium video, and I wanted to see if zirconium would, uh, would anodize with nice colors. Um, because I didn't see any, see any description of it on the internet. So I tried, and I went all the way up gradations of 6 volts, all the way up to 100 volts, 150 volts actually, and uh, didn't make any nice colors. So then I tried torching it with a propane torch, and it, it made kind of, a little bit, a little bit, some, some nice colors. But I'll talk about the physics behind this kind of effect um, in my niob niobium video. Here is what the bar looked like before I torched and electrocuted it. Um, zirconium is also used in nuclear reactors because zirconium absor rather slows down neutrons so that they're uh, able to react um, better with nuclei. Now what's very interesting is that the element below zir uh, zirconium, hafnium, actually absorbs neutrons, which is definitely not what you want. You want to just slow down the neutrons. And because the element right below zirconium, it, has, it is fairly similar chemically to zirconium, um, although definitely not nuclearly. Um, and so it's actually quite difficult to, to um, separate the hafnium from zirconium. And in, in a lot of commercial zirconium, there is about uh, 1 to 6 percent hafnium. This is fine for most purposes, is haf hafnium, as I said, is, is quite chemically similar. But because it's so different nuclearly, um, you actually have to separate out this uh, percentage of, of hafnium if you're going to use um, the zirconium in, in, in a nuclear reactor. And this bar of zirconium I have, as you can see, is actually 99.9999 percent pure zirconium. So this would be, um, well, I think it would probably be good enough to, to use in a nuclear reactor. Anyway, so I was wanting to do some chemistry uh, with zirconium, and the problem is that zirconium is pretty reactive, and um, really, the, the um, it doesn't form very many stable, uh, colored, you know, cool colored compounds that don't react with water. In fact, I don't think it forms any. So, um, the in its in its four plus oxidation state, the most common oxidation state for zirconium, um, its chloride, zirconium tetrachloride, hydrolyzes when it when it comes into contact with water and forms zirconium oxychloride. So. Um, you can't really do any aqueous chemistry with it, and I don't really have any kind of specialized equipment to deal with um, oxygen exclusion. I tried to react it directly with chlorine gas, but that didn't work so well. Here I have an Erlenmeyer flask, which I was with a piece of zirconium in it, 
and another Erlenmeyer flask with some bleach, and I just added some hydrochloric acid to that and piped the chlorine gas that was generated right into the Erlenmeyer flask. Here is some eight times real time footage. Um, you see that the Erlenmeyer flask is on a hot plate and it's on super high heat, so it's very hot in there. And I've got chlorine gas in there, as you can see from the green color, and yet the zirconium is not reacting. Finally, I decided to just try to burn it because um, titanium, or rather, zirconium, like titanium, burns with brilliant white with a brilliant white flame. And sparks and, and tiny, tiny, tiny um, particles of zirconium actually can be pyrophoric. So I, I actually bought a one gram bar of, of, of zirconium. Here it is. And uh, tried burning it. Now it turns out one gram is, is a large enough quantity that it wouldn't burn right away. Um, in fact, it didn't burn at all. But it did do something quite interesting. So I'll show you what happened. At first, I just tried using a normal propane torch to burn the zirconium. As you can see, it only got red hot. Next, I tried using my ultra hot um, oxygen map torch, which can, which is twice the temperature of the propane torch, and is used for welding. Here are some highlights of that attempt. We're gonna sing stupid doors songs now. Come on, come on, stupid zirconium. Then I used some heavy duty pliers and cut the piece, the zirconium, into many small pieces. I then made a small depression in the brick and try it again. As is obvious, the zirconium did not light on fire. What is quite interesting is what is left behind. This looks like glass, but it obviously can't be because there is no silicon, so there can't be silicon dioxide. What I'm pretty sure it is, is um, crystallized zirconium dioxide, which looks quite a bit and behaves quite a bit like glass.